One of the biggest new features in Blender 2.66 is the dynamic topology sculpting. This is a huge update to the sculpting system in Blender, which was already pretty good, but now is dramatically better with a lot of improvements. Most importantly, because dynamic topology gives us a lot more flexibility. So dynamic topology, if you're not aware of what it is, is basically a automatic tessellation method for sculpting. So traditionally when sculpting, say if I were sculpting on this little base mesh character, I would go in to the modifiers, I would add in a multi-resolution modifier, and then I would subdivide this a couple of times as I was sculpting, and then make my changes on this sculpt within edit mode. So now using my different brushes, I can go in, I can sculpt on it, and it's affected based on the individual layer. And as I need to add more detail, I would subdivide it again and just go on my way. This presents a lot of problems because for one, you run into issues where maybe you need more detail here on the head where you can see there's not a whole lot of geometry, but I don't need more ge geometry in the body. And so as I subdivide this, I'm adding a lot of geometry all over the place that is being wasteful. I don't actually need that. And so there's lots of different kinds of workflow techniques we would use to get around this. And this has some really good advantages, but with dynamic topology, we no longer need to do this. So if I just remove this, Inside sculpt mode, we have a new tab called topology and enabling dynamic topology is going to allow us to automatically tessellate the surface underneath our mesh only as needed. And this was originally developed. Uh, it first came into play with Blender under the name Unlimited Clay by another developer. And then over the years, it's kind of changed. It's been readapted and then was recoded by Nicholas Bishop recently. And that is the implementation that we have today. And this is a really, really powerful feature. And let me just show you what it does real quick. If I enable dynamic, First of all, it goes in and it triangulates my entire mesh, which is okay. But now if I go in and I just say sculpt around the eye, it immediately just starts tessellating the mesh under my brush as needed in order to accommodate that detail. So if I now go into edit mode, you can see exactly what's happened. It's basically just added actual geometry underneath my model or underneath my brush in order to add in that detail. And so unlike the multi-resolution modifier, which is basically artificially modifying the surface, you know, it's all done as a modifier, dynamic topology is actually adding in new geometry. And this has its downsides, but mostly it's very, very powerful because it allows us to add detail as we we wish and allow us to add detail only where we need. So rather than subdividing our entire model and adding in a lot of unnecessary geometry, here I've only added in geometry where I need it, in this case, the eyes, and everything else stays really nice and optimized. And so in reality, what you're able to do is you're able to get much higher detailed models with less geometry because your geometry is much more optimized for that detail. Now, it does come with the downside that you're no longer able to jump down resolutions or anything like that. The, the geometry that you're sculpting in is your actual geometry, but since most sculpting workflow works with creating a high resolution sculpt and then retopologizing with a low resolution, this works out really well. So one thing you also notice is that when I went into edit mode, my enable dynamic was immediately turned off. And when dynamic is turned off, I'm no longer tessellating the mesh under my brush. It's only working with the existing geometry. So if I enable this again, and then test brush, you can see it's tessellating that surface. And this actually is very, very good because it allows you to work one way or the other. Dynamic topology is technically slower than regular sculpting, and so there will be times where you want to just use your regular sculpting brushes without actually tessellating the surface, and so you can just turn that off. But when you want to add in detail, then you can just use dynamic topology and you're good to go. There's one thing to note here. We do have the detail size, and the detail size is the maximum edge length in pixels, so based on your screen resolution, of the detail added. So the smaller this size, the smaller the edges it will add under your brush. To see this in effect, let's just zoom in here. And I'm going to disable smooth shading so we can actually see the geometry. And let me just add in a brush stroke like this. So you can, you can clearly see all of the individual triangles that are added here. 
But if I say turn this down to, let's just do something pretty extreme and go about eight. So now the maximum edge length is eight pixels. And at the same zoom, zoom distance, if I brush in now, you can see it's using much, much smaller geometry. And so if we really zoom in here, you can actually see that it is in fact very, very small. Let me just, I'll just turn off perspective mode so we can really zoom in. And since this is based in pixels, as you zoom in, if I zoom way in here, and I brush this in, notice it's again based on your pixel resolution, not on the mesh resolution. And so you can go and you can add just remarkably tiny, tiny detail uh, that otherwise, you know, there's no way that you would be able to do that with a multi-resolution workflow because it would simply be uh, too high resolution in order to uh, feasibly work with it. However, since we have all this detail in here now, if I say set this back up to, we'll just do 25. And let me just turn this feature off for a moment because that's actually what I want to demo. If I now go in here and I sculpt on top of this, you'll notice that I don't need that tiny bit of detail, but it's, it's maintaining. So it's keeping that. So it's just adjusting the surface. It's not adding any, any new resolution because it's uh, the maximum edge or the edge length here is below 25. And so it doesn't add, need to add new geometry but this is kept. And so this is, has become unnecessary geometry that I didn't need. And this is where the collapse short edges feature comes in. So if I enable collapse short edges, and now I go in here and I brush over this, it's going to remove all of that tiny geometry and replace it with larger geometry. And so what this does is it basically takes this detail size, and as you sculpt over something, it will continue to add new geometry if it needs to, such as right in here. But if it reaches an area, and those edges are smaller than, than the detail size, then it will automatically remove those. And so you can use this kind of as a um, optimization feature where you can go in and remove little details and things like that. Now, of course, you need to be careful with this feature because you, uh, not only can you optimize an area, but you can also quickly destroy any fine detail that you may have added. And, and so generally, in, in my own workflow, and of course this will vary with everyone's, uh, generally I will turn collapse short edges on while I'm kind of, you know, exploring the forms and just kind of, you know, experimenting with the model and kind of seeing what I want to do. But then as soon as I get to the actual detailing phase, then I will turn it off so that I don't destroy any geometry that I really, really wanted. Uh, but it does work really well for going in and optimizing a mesh. Because like if I go in, let's just say I add a whole bunch of detail right in here, you know, we'll just do some scribbles, whatnot. And then I realize, wow, I really didn't want that. With collapse short edges on, I just zoom out, draw over it, and it removes it just like that. Um, now, one thing to note, dynamic topology does not care about your initial geometry. You know, unlike the multi-resolution modifier, which basically starts with your base mesh and then goes from there, this one, if I zoom out and I sculpt over this, it's going to just start removing all of those areas as well, even though that was my starting point. And so this is literally working directly on the mesh. So that's just something that you want to be aware of. Next, we do have an optimize feature here. So as you are sculpting, if you start getting really complex and it's starting to slow down a bit, you can simply click the optimize and it will basically optimize the BVH or the bounding volume hierarchy, I believe it stands for just to improve the performance. Generally, this isn't a problem, but sometimes, you know, doing this will just improve your performance a little bit. Now, you notice right now I've been working with symmetry, but let's say I've been modeling and I forget to turn symmetry on. And so I've zoomed way in here. I'm adding in lots of detail. Maybe I've used the blob brush and I go in and I add some cool little nodules or whatever that I really like. And then I can zoom out and realize, crap, I really wanted that on both sides of my model. Or perhaps, you know, one side of the model has become messed up and the other side is nice and clean. Well, we have this new symmetrize option here that is a part of the dynamic topology. So you notice if I turn this off, symmetrize disappears or it just becomes disabled. So I enable dynamic. And then I have this direction where I can set, hey, if I want to copy the positive x-axis, so in this case, the model on this side, if I want to copy this over to this side, I can simply choose positive x to negative x and then click symmetrize and it will just replicate that model across and merge it down the center. And this works along all angles after I just delete my grease pencil. So if I go say negative y to positive y, click symmetrize, it does exactly that. And so you can get all kinds of funky little results with this, but it works really well for doing specific things of say replicating across one side, or if you, let's say you're working on a hard surface model and you want to sculpt on just one corner of like a box or something, and then you want to symmetrize it across. And in fact, let me just do this as an example. So if I just add in a cube, we'll go over here 
and we'll go back into scope mode. We enable dynamic, and then let's just use, we'll just use the blob brush again, and we'll go down, something like this. And then I realized, wow, I really wanted that on all corners. I can just go negative Y to positive Y, symmetrize, and then positive X to negative X, symmetrize, and positive Z to negative Z, and there we go. So now I've got a completely consistent sculpt all the way around that otherwise would have been very difficult to create uh, had I not done that. Now, of course, this exact thing, I could have simply used symmetry along all my axes and you know done something like this, but you'll notice it wouldn't have replicated it over here or anything like that. And so there's just, you know, there's a lot of really cool things that you can do with the symmetrize, particularly in the case of mistakes that otherwise are more difficult to do. So really, really handy feature right there. And that's about it for dynamic topology. But let me just show you one more thing that is really particularly good with dynamic topology. And that is in particular the different brushes that it works with. So first you should note that it doesn't work with all brushes. So things like the... The layer brush does not work with dynamic topology. The grab brush does not work. The thumb and twist brushes do not work. Um, and so these ones, basically, you can use them with dynamic topology, but they're not going to tessellate the mesh as you're working on it. There's various reasons for this. Um, I'm not going to go into the details just because I don't want to get them wrong because I'm not exactly sure on the technical aspects of them. However, there is one brush that does work with dynamic topology that is particularly good. By all the others, oh, the mask brush also does not work with dynamic topology. But things like the clay strips, the crease, the draw, the fill deepen, the flat and contrast, those all do work. However, the snake hook brush you may think initially does not work if you have collapsed short edges off. And the snake hook brush is one of those brushes that really, while very, very cool, has been pretty much worthless for the entire time it's been in Blender. Because what the snake hook brush does is basically allows you, it does exactly this, where you grab a piece of your geometry and you pull it out, and as it goes, it basically drops off a little bit of the geometry, giving you this kind of like tentacle effect, where you can like pull out tentacles and things like that. Really, really powerful, but with traditional geometry, let me just turn this off, the snake hook brush is next to worthless because it does things like that, where it just stretches the geometry out like crazy. However, with dynamic topology, it works really, really well because as we pull this out, it generates new geometry and allows you to create things like this. So you can go and you can pull out tentacles, you can pull out limbs, you can pull out all kinds of different things that otherwise previously you, you would have had to model into your base mesh to get any kind of good result. Now, one thing to note is you will notice that there is a little bit of stretching in here. So it worked better than the regular grab brush, but there's still kind of, it's weird geometry. It creates all kinds of weird geometry. So to do use this snake hook brush well, it's best to turn on collapsed short edges. And then when you go in here, let's just give him another set of horns back in here. It creates much, much nicer geometry because basically all of these little weird edges that it's creating, it's automatically removing those and cleaning it up as it goes. So you get much nicer geometry in there for then using that. And you know, you can then do whatever you want with this. The snake hook brush also works very well for moving things. So again, using clap short edges, if I just want to kind of pull that up. It's again optimizing the model as it goes by just removing those nasty areas and works very well for doing all kinds of move commands that otherwise would have been uh, next to impossible if not impossible to do with the multi-resolution modifier if you hadn't already modeled these directly into the base mesh. And one of the things that's very cool about this is if we just, again, let's go back into object mode. Let's add in a new cube is we can really use this to our advantage to do all kinds of things. So if we enable dynamic topology, go into our snake hook brush, we can then just pull out basically anything from a cube. And so this stuff never would have been possible before, but now with dynamic topology, you can go in and you can create anything from basically anything. So you no longer have to use a base mesh in order to have any reasonable sense of control because since you're actually generating and removing and modifying the actual geometry under the surface, you can create basically anything from anything. And that is the real power of dynamic topology because it gives you much more flexibility for exploratory sculpting, for artistic sculpting, and to really just kind of push the sculpting system in Blender much further than you otherwise could.